Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode of DCS Operations H64 Apache Tips from a Noob. And today we're actually going to be talking about a really awesome tool for anyone who either A, might be interested in, or B, has a stream deck. You guys are going to find this tool to be extremely helpful. Okay, so as time goes on, I am seeing more and more use of the Stream Deck being used for flight simulation or game simulations in general. Uh, it has gained extreme popularity in Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as I've seen in some instances of American Truck Simulator, and now I'm starting to see it more and more in DCS World as I am getting back into it, which I'm really glad I had because I didn't realize how much I missed DCS. Just had to throw that little caveat out there. Now, let's talk about what it does so you have a couple of scripts that are going to have to be installed from the background and a profile that's going to be have to install for the stream deck now i'm going to be able to show you guys here on screen what's going to look like but for those of you who don't know what a stream deck is let's talk about that for just a moment okay so here is the elgato stream deck now this is one of these small ones i believe this is the this is the same one i have it's a 15 key stream deck okay but they actually have an xl that has a whole bunch more buttons to it now here's the awesome part about these things okay is initially they were designed with streamers in mind it integrates with things like twitch and obs and you can add sounds and do different functionality that are from it it's, it was meant as more of a uh production utility than necessarily something used for simulation or gaming However, as time went on, everyone started to find more and more advantages to using these um, to, um, uh, you know, take care of their controller needs. Here's the reason why I epically suggest one of these to anyone who is, especially if you're limited on space or if you are limited on buttons, switches, etc. You don't want to buy a new HOTAS, whatever it may be, or you're just looking to have a bit of expandability with your simulation experience, is that each one of these buttons that you're seeing here on the screen can be reprogrammed and refitted based on what you're doing. And you can very quickly, as we're going to see in a minute, navigate through different menus and submenus to access the different features that you're looking for. And once you get that muscle memory down, with especially with only 15 keys, I can tell you that in VR, uh, it is very, very easy once you start getting that muscle memory of where the buttons that you're looking for are. So let's get into its application in today's use for the Apache. All right, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it does. I'm going to show you what the functionality is, how um, I use it, and the differences uh, that I've been finding and the things that I really enjoy about it and things I'd like to see added to it. Um, and then at the end of the video, I will show you how to install it, assuming I still have your interest. So if you guys are already hooked and you're just like, absolutely, yes, I don't care what it does, uh, just jump towards the end of the video and it will have the installation process down there. Um, now, um, what you're seeing here up on the screen is a repeat of what I'm seeing on the physical stream deck here. Okay, so you can see I just switched to the main menu. And this is for specifically the Apache. Now, there are profiles out there for the F-16, the F-18, the F-14, I think. There's quite a few of them that are out there. Like I said, I am seeing more and more use of a stream deck in these different simulators. And it's really becoming a really cool feature. So, first thing, let's talk about some of the biggest ones that catch my attention right away. Um, let me get in here. There we go. I'm going to zoom in real quick and watch the master caution, which is the bottom button and the master warning. We all know that thing goes off about 400 times during the startup process. Very nice being able to have that right on the ready. Okay. Moving over to our comps. This is another cool one. Um, let me move the stream deck window over because you guys are going to want to see this one. Com menu. Okay. Com menu again. I'm just hitting the uh, chat bubble there on the far left in the middle row. Look at that. Okay, you want to talk to I don't know the ground crew. F8. You want to talk? You want to do a rearm or refuel? Boom! There it is. Or electrical power. Excuse me. Apparently is what I selected. I didn't want that. So let's go back a screen here. Uh, we'll see what was rearm refuel. Did I hit the wrong one? Yep, that's F1. F1. Boom! There's our rearm refuel window. Okay, so. Think about how many times it is obnoxious as crap trying to figure out how I mean, for the comm switches alone. Okay, this is huge. This is very, very awesome because it's very easy to remember F1, 2, 3, 4, move your hand down until you find what you're looking for. <laughs> that rhymed. 
<laughs> Boom, psh, I'm here all week. All right, so let's go on back down. One of the other big ones that catches my attention a lot, okay? So the manual range, okay? Uh, setting your, your range for the different weapons. Now, obviously for this, you're still gonna have to make sure you have a way to get to the weapon page, but I can show you a couple tricks uh, later on in a different video on how we can arrange that too. All right, but we want to go to the weapon page, and uh, we got our gun safe on, so we can't do that. So let's go to the arm button, way up number four at the top. And look at this. We have ground. There it is. And I just had to push it. So it actually depresses the entire time I'm holding it. Look at the button. is still pushed down because I'm holding the button. So it's just it's real tactile contact. And then put turn the safe on. Let's waz the gun. Uh, let's do one more thing. Let's make sure my radar altimeter is on because I always forget to turn it on. Nope. Okay, cool. We're good. I couldn't remember if I did it or not. So let's go back to the weapon page. All right, we've got our gun wazed. Let's do our, bring up our iHads here. And we would still have to select manual range, right? That's still going to be a requirement. So there's our manual range. But now I'm going to select KBD pilot. That's the keyboard unit, right? So there's pilot. And let's say I just want to go to auto range. There's A, enter. And you can see down there right here, we are now in auto mode on our range. If, if I wanted to select, now you'd still, again, you'd have to hit the manual range button. I think it would be cool if they added a quick access, if to no other button than this one right here, because obviously it's gonna be something that you know, you're gonna adjust pretty often. But if we wanted to be as cool as Casmo and go, let's see here. Oh, we don't have a zero key. Okay, that part kind of sucks. <laughs> but that's all right. We can figure that out at a later time. Uh, a zero key is kind of a critical one. So, but if you want to do 811 meters, right, we could do that, set that in, you know, it's still close, right? Can't be as cool as Casmo with the 800, but you know, those are uh, features that are available. All right. Now I haven't messed with all these. Another really cool one though, click the knee board, click the uh, button number three, the OPCL. There's our knee board. Next pages, previous pages, okay. You have a mark point. There's our aircraft right there, that carrot that disappeared. Close the knee board. If you just want to glance, hold that button down, let go, and we are totally good. All right, and then obviously you have your radio functions as well. Let me move on down there. Boop, 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 okay. That's FM1, so it doesn't have everything, but there's the master switch with the VHF, UHF. Now, I haven't figured out how to use these rotaries that are available yet. Those ones still sort of have me stumped. Oh, wait. That did something. Huh. I'm not sure what those do yet. I'm not sure how to use that. That's something we're just going to have to learn with. Anyway, like I said, so I haven't used everything yet. I'm still learning myself here. But as soon as I saw this, I was totally stoked and immediately saw some of the advantages here. Um, if we want to go NVGs, okay, so check this out. Oops. Turn our iHads back on. Adjust the gain. The level. Right out there at your fingertips. Now you still have to turn it on and off. Oh, that's my selector. Sorry. Let's just kill that. There we go. Anyway, you guys are hopefully catching the advantages here. We have an engine selector. So check this out. These are actually really cool. Let's see here. We have our primary lights. Let's see if that actually worked there. That says dim. There it goes. I'm starting to. Oh, I see dim or bright. It's going full to full. That's why I'm not seeing it. I gotcha. I gotcha. Your signal lights, dim or bright. Your nav lights, off, dim, bright. Engine start. I don't know if I actually hit that long enough. Yep, it goes. And then you have your engine number one. Oh, gosh darn it. That was probably in you guys' way that whole time, but you guys got the gist. I can move the throttle forward. There's the cutoff. 
all from the stream deck. Everything you're seeing that, or at least hearing me do, I've done directly from the stream deck. Stop the APU, which I just did, <laughs> which wasn't the ideal thing to do. But anyways, so you guys have the idea of what it does, and that's what I was really looking for, was for you guys to at least see the demonstration. I can't believe the engines are still starting. It's kind of funny. Um, so let's go ahead now and talk about how to install it. Okay, so you've got your Stream Deck. You've got your Stream Deck software installed. You need to make sure you have the, the actual software from Elgato installed for the Stream Deck in order to ex execute the profile. All right, so you've got that installed, and now you are ready to begin. So first, you're going to come to this page here, and I'll have all three of these links down in the description below, and I'm going to put them in the order in which you want to download. All right, so the first one is you're going to be downloading here, okay? So you're going to download that zip file, and then we're going to be grabbing this bottom uh, line right here, okay, this bottom link. And that bottom link is going to take us to the previous page, which is going to be here. Okay, now you want to come right here, click on that, and you're going to want this top line right here. This is the actual plugin. If you're a coder and you're good with it, you probably already know what source code is. If you're just someone who wants to use it, as you've seen here today, you just want this top line right here. So we're going to download that. Then you're going to move to the second link in my description, or the third link, I should say, and we're going to come here. You're going to go to code and download zip. Okay, and once both of those are complete, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so everything is finished downloading now, and now we're ready to actually start applying some of this stuff. Now, if you still have your stream, as long as your Stream Deck software is installed, okay, so you have the Agato Stream Deck software that you guys were seeing on the screen earlier, okay? You got that installed, all you have to do is double click this. Okay, it's gonna automatically ask you, so we'll walk through it real quick. Let me throw that window up. <clears throat> Let's change this one. Yep, there we go. So this is the next screen that's gonna pop up. And let me just move this back here there so from here we're just going to hit install in the case it's telling me it's already installed as with the, the pop-up i just got i know you guys can't see it but you just let it install and boom the next step is now we're going to come over here to the scripts we're going to do 7-zip or extract it however you want i'm going to extract it to its own folder and what you're interested in, you're going to see all of this stuff, but what you really want to be is in scripts. And you want to take these two right here. We're going to copy. You're going to go to your saved games director. That's going to be C, your user profile name, saved games like mine, C, overkill, saved games, DCS, scripts, and paste. Okay. So from here, you would paste. It's asking me if I want to replace it. I'm not going to worry about it because I already did it. Okay, and so you should see those two files that you just copied, export and DCS export script, inside of your scripts folder. Okay, so we're almost done now. That's done. And then now all we need to do is come here and extract the profile, because it's a RAR file, so we want to extract it. Open it up, and do the same thing again. Double click this. Okay, it's going to ask you if you want to go, it actually automatically did it on the stream deck. So if we go back to the stream deck, when I double clicked that, there we go. That's what I got. It popped up with all the menus here, letting me know that it worked. Okay, so, and you can see Apache copy too, because I've got two of them. I actually probably need to get rid of one, but I'll do that at a later time. But uh, anyway, and that's it. From this point, next thing you would do is start. Uh, DCS world and you should be good to go. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it useful and as exciting as I did. I think this was freaking awesome stuff. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what some of the updates might bring to these kind of profiles. Like I said, I am seeing more and more use coming out of these uh, Elgato stream decks and uh, it's really making a big difference. Um, I had, like I said, a couple profiles from Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. And these things are really becoming popular in the gaming community. So really, really cool stuff. Anyways, guys, as always, stay safe and healthy and I will see you in the next next 
next one.